What we do as a group, we look at the spatial distribution of toxic metals in cities and also in drinking water systems and also streams. And what we're interested in doing is defining where those metals are and what risk they may pose to the community. And the most vulnerable population are children. And that's because children's brains are susceptible as they're developing to toxic metal exposure. And we've done work around arsenic and cadmium and lead. And we know the risks associated with that. And our work basically induces pressure upon the authorities and industry to make change. Change to bring their operations up to contemporary standards and expectations. I think one of the things that we've noticed is that some industries really do have a license to pollute. Where this is happening, they're using the environment and the community as a subsidy for pollution. So instead of employing best management practice, world's best practice, they're distributing their contaminants around those communities. And those children, and the adults as well, become contaminated. So do their homes and so do their gardens. And our job is to make sure that people are aware of that and to do the science that puts the pressure on for them to make the appropriate change. In the last five years, we've had quite significant impact. We've been able to change policy, we've been able to change legislation, we've influenced the decision, we believe, around the national guideline for blood lead levels. At the end of the day, we only have one planet, and it's our duty as scientists to make sure that the environment is not contaminated, that those people are not at risk of damage into the future. The children that we're going to be having, they are that future and we have a duty to protect them. And to do that, we need to make sure that the planet is safe, clean and secure for the next generation. Yeah.